The call comes from the producers of Broadchurch and they say, we've got this role for you and it involves um, central to the whole plot is you being raped. Had you any hesitation? Had you any worries? Had you any conditions? Well, well, uh, obviously, first up, I was absolutely thrilled. I mean, to be getting offered things rather than having to go to audition mm. for things is like quite a new thing and really exciting as well. But I suppose for me, in all seriousness, you know, the, the issue of rape and sexual violence on telly and, and the representation of that is something that's, you know, quite a worrying issue and, and there's a lot of conversation around it at the moment. So I knew that if this story dealt with that, that I had to be absolutely certain that it was going to be dealt with, you know, really sensitively and appropriately because, you know, sometimes it isn't. I mean, I have to say that the, the casting of me in that role immediately... I felt was interesting and, and different from, in, from the in what norm. Way? What... Well, because in in television, you know, often serious sexual assault is uh, seen very much from the perpetrator's point of view. It's very much a, a, a young woman being pursued. I mean, you've seen it so many Chased times. Chased through a dark street yeah, at night. Absolutely and, yeah, absolutely that. And it's, very, it's seen very much as, a, as an act of um, sex or desire rather than acts act of violence. And, and a uh, I, I didn't know Chris Chibnall, the, the writer and, and creator of Broadchurch, but I, I kind of knew from having seen the previous series that he was on the right page with it. But I did want to have a conversation with him about where the story would go and what it was trying to say. And he, of course, mm -hmm. completely reassured me and said that they were already in huge talks with Rape Crisis and the, the various organisations. Mm -hmm. And you have had help, him. haven't you, with um, Dorset Rape Crisis, who yeah. have come on set? Yeah, yeah. I, I've spoke to Rape Crisis, I spoke to the Independent Sexual mm -hmm. Violence Advisors. Obviously, Jodie Whittaker plays one of those in... in mm -hmm. She plays my is for in Broadchurch. I spoke to, to lots of amazing women who work at the call face of this kind of work, you know, and, and uh, it's a very underfunded um, uh, uh, service, unfortunately, and it's being cut constantly. It's a huge, huge problem in this country. I think it's 85,000 women a year and 12,000 men a year. In England and Wales alone, yeah. that doesn't include yeah. children come forward as, as uh, people. It is, and it is, as you said, it's, it's a big responsibility. I think I you're doing so. it I feel so. Brilliantly. I want to do it um, What about for you personally? How much toll does it take on you to, to play the distress of a woman who's been raped? And how do, you, how do you go home and leave that behind you at the end of a day's filming? Well, I'm, I'm always really careful when I talk about stuff like this because I, I've played a, a few roles that have uh, dealt with like massive issues. You know, I played Sophie Lancaster's mother. Um, uh, the murdered teenager's mother and I played that on stage and on film and you, and you, you always have got to remember that you're just playing the part and mm -hmm. that there are people going through this for real yeah. and there's only so much you can say about that do you does, know what I'm like? well, That's very modest of you but it does open a conversation a lot of the time doesn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah it does and uh, that's a, but that's a privilege to have that yeah. conversation with people it, it does feel like a privilege I know it's a bit of an overused yeah. word to, to play characters like this and bring these issues to the fore mm -hmm. and, and if people feel like I'm I'm doing it well and representing some mm -hmm. part of it in some way, then that's just... One amazing. of the other things that you had to consider and you had to do well was a Dorset accent, which we <laughs> haven't heard from you before. No. <laughs> Maybe never again. <laughs> I think you're doing very well. Oh, Did you find you? it hard? So hard. I mean, so hard. I mean, it's about as different and as far away from my natural accent <laughs> as possible. And, you know, and I mean, I'm a trained actor. I went to drama school. I've done a lot of different dialects in my time, but I'm not very often required to because my accent's so... My neutral mm -hmm. is so distinctive, mm -hmm. you know. So I'd just done a play at the beginning of last year uh, playing an American academic who was uh, dying of cancer, another, you know, amazing part to shave my head which is why my hair is so short in broad church um, just growing back oh. and I had to do an American accent in that and I had an amazing dialect okay. coach called well, Helen Ashton so she helped me with so you've got her, her on the board. Yeah, yeah, I, I asked this for is a clip. This is a clip. Clip. I'm watching it with everybody else which is which is exciting. Do you know I'm actually kind of wishing the week away I'm going is it Monday yet? No, I It's know. quite nice to watch it in sequence rather than binge watching a Well it's series, brilliant isn't it isn't because it? we very rarely watch telly yeah. like that now don't we? You often like catch up on things and, and yeah. binge watch like you say into the night and I 
and there's been a bit of a spate of series okay. like this where you're all talking about Waiting it. Never, mind, it's never mind all that, never mind all that. <laughs> Mel Gibson. <laughs> I, I just stopped, we've just got to nail this once more. Did you or did you not throw yourself at Mel Gibson? Well, that so that gives a slightly false impression of it. I'd, in, in my 20s, I had a, a, a series of a near misses, like going to be seen for really big films in tiny roles. And I was seen um, sometime in the 90s for the auspicious role of Toothless Girl at Wedding in Braveheart. But you had <laughs> the Toothless, toothless, toothless girl, girl at, at the wedding. wedding. Yes, wedding. Yes. Right. <laughs> and so I was brought into the studio to meet Mel and the casting and I had to make an instant um, impression on him so the casting director said just like basically as he comes in just kind of throw yourself at him in the most gauche way and just be like and I was like oh, I'm gauche enough without that instruction yeah. you know so yeah he came in and I was kind of like are you Mel? <laughs> <laughs> And needless to say, I didn't get the role. I think he, he was, didn't. I think he was slightly non-post by me. I think he was like, who is I think this? he was threatened by you. Threatened. Do you think he, he could see? see? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that might be what it was. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that would have yeah. been another accent you would have had her worked on as well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I thought about yeah. that. I'm not sure whether she had any lines, actually. <laughs> but yeah, but maybe, yeah. <laughs>